Right on. Get your greasy little face up next to the radio because it's time for America's favorite radio program, Animal Stories. And now here in person is the Animal Stories news team anchorman, I, your charming and delightful old Uncle Lair, and him in, in person, little Tommy. Hi, Tommy. Good morning, Uncle Lair. Good morning. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Once again, as the shadows of night fall graciously upon the major metropolitan city in the Midwest, the boy in the box to his eye cautiously enters Uala, and good evening, boogie checkers, and a good evening to you. Is this a functional unit? Once upon a time, the biggest names in rock were seen around the world in black t-shirts emblazoned with the name of a Chicago institution, a radio station, the Loop, home to gods of radio, home to gods of radio, and gods of rock. While most stations played made bands, the Loop made the bands that they played. It hacked its way through a jungle of mediocrity to a land as dangerous as it was exciting. The rest of the world first experienced this power in 1979 at the infamous Disco Demolition. 90,000 Loop listeners showed up at a stadium built for 50, and Americans asked, What kind of radio station could influence untold thousands in such a way? And the answer? This kind. It was born in the year of Star Wars, and in Chicago, it was the force that was with you. And the force was with you. The mighty loop was as tall as Jordan, as strong as the fridge. In a world full of wannabes, the loop screamed. <laughs> In a landscape crowded with emptiness and pockmarked with sameness, the loop kicked ass and took names and addresses and phone numbers. Then later, after the Stones interview, the loop ran home for a quick shower, then called one of those phone numbers to set up a private interview. Yes, that was a metaphor for the loop getting laid. Hello? Loop got laid a lot. The loop screamed with dangerous hosts, dangerous comedy, and dangerous music. As it grew, it made money. And more money. And little by little, an institution became an investment. A melting pot of genius became a few pages in an annual report. What the number crunchers couldn't grasp is that with some things, putting profits before all else ultimately leads to lower profits. You couldn't see that what made the loop huge in the first place wasn't cost-cutting or homogenizing. It wasn't consultants or research. It was talent, brilliance. It was magic. Take the power and believe 
those lies of mechanical hearts No regard for human lives Nice, she would like to sell reality. What is wrong? What is right? Who's not lost our sight? Let's break! The world around us! Let's break! The hole inside us! Don't be! Don't be! Welcome to another exciting Sunday night episode of the original Red Pill Show. Today is Sunday, August 2nd, 2020. This show is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please use at your own risk. This show is copyrighted by me and Freedom Revolution Network. No part of it can be reused, rebroadcasted in any way, shape, or form without our written consent. <clears throat> or you can just ask. Finally, this show is opinionated. That's why we do it. The host, especially me callers 815-290-0912 but don't call in people that are naughty in the chat room and guess which should be the band edge of paradise tonight are and always will be opinionated under no circumstances whatsoever should opinions be taken as advice you're seeking professional advice we strongly encourage you to hire a license if required person in his or her field there little tommy hey man no that's his name broadcasting live from the wonderful town of well, Loveland, but the state of Colorado, where I just, man, I went to work out. And I guess as of yesterday, now you have to wear your mask when you're working out. I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Really? How am I going to work out in a mask? So I tried. And I was just bullshitting with the, uh, girl behind the counter and i go you know I'm, I'm just conversing with you right she goes oh no i i get it i tried doing it yesterday i was doing cardio and legs and uh, so now this is going on for two weeks so i don't know but i was not really too happy about that so anyway what's going on uh margarita monet and uh, Dave Bates should be calling in here. It is six, right? It's seven. So it's six their time. So they should. That's the thing with interviews. I don't know when they're going to call in. I don't know if they're going to call in. 
I don't know, but I'm going to message them and politely say, where the fuck are you? Do, 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 do. La, 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 la. Because, uh, I don't know, I've been trying to get these two. Well, this will be the first with these two guys. Sup? up? What's up, G? Are you guys calling in tonight and you're gonna be like uh oh we forgot oh, let's see i have everything <clears throat> on my end except my throat i don't know what's up i just feel like i have something stuck in it tonight oh yes and we only have an hour which is now down to 56 minutes and if it doesn't happen which happens in uh doing your own show you never know what's gonna happen being on the listening end you just think oh it's all professional and all fucking stuff uh how about no at least not here or on this show and uh interviews are very hard to obtain schedule and actually execute so we'll see i don't know i just messaged them but anyway, and I don't really want to flip to the chat room, which you just did. I'm good, Rod. How are you? How's Wilbur? Oh, I can run over a little. I can't because Dwayne's like, uh, did you know that Rad has his show tonight? I'm like, um, yeah, but I wasn't sure what time. And this is the only time I could get them to commit. Uh don't leave me hanging here man what am i gonna do and then i can't even flip i'm gonna have to flip though what's going on no i'm not calling it but no more than 10 minutes because i am scheduled mine already yeah no i don't care i'll do that i'll tell them that for sure but um if they don't call in i'm gonna delete all the music off my computer so how's that just to be an asshole because this is like the third time and i have an inner she's so sweet though i'm just killing time here i don't mean anything i say but i interviewed her like three years ago and uh she just she's just so full of energy and sweet and it's great and i wanted to get dave on this time because he's the guitar player and it's always nice to have the guitar player's perspective and uh, I don't, I don't know if they're, I think they're a couple. I don't know. I just get that vibe off of it. And every time they do a live video on Facebook, they're sitting together at a house. So if it looks like a duck, you know, it's probably a duck. But um, no answer. Nobody's home. Oh man come on and i was gonna go to one of their concerts <laughs> they actually i wanted to talk to them about that because they were scheduled to come to denver but i don't know this one i want to talk about covid19 and how it's i did a post on facebook and a quick podcast for another band forever still because maya one of my favorite bands too Maya Shoning posted on Twitter that Google is taking off all the bands in the country of Denmark where they're from and then Spotify is reducing the income for artists by 70% or something which they don't make shit to begin with so I don't know. I try I try getting a hold of her, but I did like a save save this band, save forever still, because I I don't know what she's doing or whatever, but they should have been here in the States years ago. It's such a great band. They're they're great too. But uh Huh. 
what is it, 610? 710? Let me make sure I put the right time on here so this isn't my fault. Go through the messaging chain. Hello, is anybody home? What's up? <laughs> oh, let me see. What did I put? What did I put? What did I put? What did I put? Eight one five two nine zero zero nine one two. That's right. Next Sunday would be better. This was last Sunday. 6 p.m. your time. So they're in California, asshole, asshole, which is 7 here, right? And it's 7.10, about. And okay, cool. Next Sunday at 6. Talk to you then. Okay, so it's not on my end. I could show this on the screen if you want. I just don't want to go away from Google Voice because every time I do that, I can't hear the phone ring. Okay, what else? Yeah, they're a great band. They really are. The, the song that I uh, played is Hollow off of their album, their latest release, Universe. And uh, really a great album, really. And uh, after six on the Pacific Coast, so it is six, right? 6 p.m. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It ain't me, man. I don't know. But they did get a hold of me late last time. So I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. They got a hold of me at 723 last Sunday. Hey, Tim, did you still want to talk? Uh, well, no, I'm playing Xbox. and I mean, I didn't say that, but I was. I'm playing Xbox with some friends online and... But I said, if you guys want to, I said, if if you if not, we can do it next Sunday. I guess I should have gave you the call-in number, and I did. I gave it to him again. I'm going to give it to him one more time, and then I don't know what to say. 815-290-0912. There you go. Well, the interview. Oh yeah, she's a she's an opera. I want to save it for the interview. Damn it, she's a converted opera singer, and um, just an amazing voice. And I think she's Russian. I don't want to. I think she said that. I haven't talked to her in three years, and it looks like it's going to be longer. That's what she said. All right, let's see. How am I? I'm good, actually. Hello, everyone. Facebook is buffering here. Is it? You know, Facebook sucks anyway. Don't even get me started on it. What else? Da, da, da. So I'm on Twitch. Yes, we're on Twitch. We're on YouTube. We're on Periscope. We're on Spotify. We're on all this other crap. Um and all these platforms that I am going to predict are going to ban at least me <laughs> or uh, some other things. Because uh, I just don't, I don't like putting, uh, I don't know why Denmark, I don't know why they said that. Maybe we should look that up. I don't want to, okay, let me look it up. I, I don't, I'm not a fact checker guy. If somebody says something, I believe I'm Google. I'm not looking for a challenge or a fight or an argument discussion, but not, not an argument. Google bans. 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 That's kind of weird. Bans. Bans. From. Um, uh, Google threatens to remove all Danish music from YouTube. And I'm racist. Wow. Uh, off of tech dot slash dot dot org. Dot org. Dot. Oh, this is kind of a, this is a discussion group. 
Okay. YouTube is embroiled in a very public spat with songwriters and music publishers in Denmark. Why? Leave them alone. They didn't hurt anybody. According to one music industry news site, I wish they put that there. They cite Coda, the group that collects royalties and licensing fees for musicians, are saying that YouTube is now threatening to remove all music written by Danish songwriters. The cause of the threat is a disagreement between the two parties. Oh, there's a shocker. Everybody's getting along so nicely, not the music industry. Two parties over the remuneration. Should be remuneration, shouldn't it? Whatever. It says REM. Of songwriters and publishers in the market, YouTube and Coda's last multi-year licensing deal expired in April. Since then, the two parties have been operating under a temporary license agreement. In a statement to Media Friday on July 31st, Coda claims YouTube is insisting that in order to extend its temporary deal in Denmark, Coda must now agree to a near 70% reduction in payments to composers and songwriters. YouTube has fired back at this claim, suggesting that under its existing temporary deal with Coda, which expired Friday, the body, excuse me, earned back less than half of the guaranteed payments handed over by the service. Oh my God. Coda says it cannot accept YouTube's, YouTube's terms. Who can, by the way, according to the article, adding that Google and YouTube have now unilaterally decided that Coda's members cannot have their content shown on YouTube. The director of YouTube music, E-M-E-A, counters that they are asking for substantially more than what we pay our other partners, according to the article, which also shares the statement from YouTube, we take copyright law very seriously. As our license expires today, and since we have been unable to secure an agreement, we will remove identified code of content from the platform. Holy shit. It's pretty rough, ain't it? So all the all the Denmark artists are going to suffer because these guys are arguing over money that they didn't even create material. You know what? The music industry's got to change. It's just got to change. I've been bitching about that shit forever that these guys bust their ass, practice, 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 probably work a full-time job or at least some type of job, practice in their band, write some material, learn how to play, get some chemistry, finally get good, go out on the road, pack their shit up in their car. That's probably a piece of shit. And they're lucky if they make it to their gig and they make it there and they do this. I don't know how many times. And then they finally get a break at a record deal. And the signing company for the record deal. Now I don't know this, but I've, I've heard allegedly they want the rights to the material that you just busted your ass to create and all this other kind of stuff. And uh, then they'll manage you and give you a record and all this crap. And uh, they take a lot of your money. And I'm not a rocket scientist, but that's a horrible deal. I, I don't know why bands just can't put their stuff out there. And I contacted Maya, the lead singer from For, Forever Still Up, when I when she posted this about this crap. And I'm like, why don't you just give your music away for free? So you build your fan base, fuck a management company. And this is what I would do. Fuck the management company. Just play your music, give it out for free, build this fan base, build a following, then do internet concerts. You can't go do a concert now because of COVID-19. Do a live concert on the internet somehow, some way, whatever, figure it out and get a bigger fan base. And then when you finally get a fan base, people will want to buy your albums and then start charging for them. Then there's no middleman. And then you hear, well, you know, all these uh, record companies own most of the 
theaters that you go to or the stadiums. So unless you sign with them, you can't play live. Okay, well, fuck them. Then find a place to play on the internet and play on the internet and change the way you do concerts. But eventually you're going to find a place to play. I don't know, but this is bullshit, man, because these guys bust their ass and to have somebody in the middle and take your fucking money like that is just is unacceptable and then threaten because they're fighting over an agreement and the agreement expired. So now it's temporary. So because it's temporary, they want more money and they're not going to pay more money. So then they reciprocate by saying, well, then fuck you. We're not going to play your shit. Really? Wow, what a great way to handle business. I, I, don't, I don't know. But I think that is just horrible. Yeah, I don't know, man. They must have forgot because it's got to be coming on 6th. It's 720. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, apparently, actually, they got a hold of me 23 minutes later last Sunday. Let me see. I'm going to say, I'm being nice. Apparently, apparently you guys forgot. I don't know. I don't know. God, I washed my hair and put on my nicest clothes and I'm waiting for you to come pick me up and you didn't come. <laughs> Asshole. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to send this. Okay. So now I said, hope everything's all right. I don't know. And then hit send. Okay. Now I'm going to go to Spotify and hit my delete button and take all the material off. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm kidding. I don't know what. It's so hard to get people to commit. I, don't, I know they're practicing a lot. They're writing new songs. They just, uh, they're on Twitter. They just uh, showed their drummer smashing the drums. Uh, writing some new material, which is kind of quick because Universe hasn't been out that long. I don't think. Let me see if it says. I don't think it's even been out a year yet, to be honest. Uh, 2019. 10 songs, 36 minutes. Great album. Uh, Fire Electricity Universe is a good song. Hollow, this one that's pretty good. Face the Face of Fear is good. I don't know if you listen to any of this stuff, regardless if they show up or not. I mean, shit happens. That show biz, life goes on. The show must go on. But man, I'm kind of disappointed. Their um their videos are awesome. Let me see a tale of the gun. That's one of my favorite songs, too. Maybe that's on mask. I'm not sure. Yep, there it is. But, um, yeah, this is from 2011. But this is the first album I listened to when I discovered them on Twitter, I think. I think I discovered them on Twitter. I'm not sure. But I do like this stuff. But I'm going to give them another eight minutes. And after that, I'm sorry, but the ship sailed. Yeah, I know. Must be why this is not on YouTube. The show's not on YouTube. Really? Wouldn't surprise me, none. Let me look. Boom, 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 boom. I'm also reading, uh, reading it, recording it for my podcast. So it will be, definitely shows up on YouTube there. And it will be on Spotify and it will be on Podbean for a backup because I'm sick and tired of whatever strange reason the show isn't aired or whatever. 
All I know is I turn the fucking mic on, I turn shit on, and it works. And it's weird. And it's going to get weirder. Freedom Revolution Network. At work. La, 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 la. You know, maybe in the future, I shouldn't start the show until they call in. How's that? Then I don't look like an asshole. Of course, I can do that on my own. Don't need help in that department. No, it's live now. It's me, but I'm not. I don't have the camera on. Is that what you're talking about? Here. Live now. See? It's me, but I'm not. I don't have the camera on. Is Hello? Is that what you're talking about? Here. Hello? See, this live is what now. See? Fucks people up, the delay. It's me, but I'm not. I don't have the camera Should on. I interview you talking about? Hello? Here. Hello? See, this live is what now. See? Fucks people up the delay. Can I interview you? Should I interview you? Hello. Hello. See, this is what now. See, fucks people up the delay. Can I interview you? Will you call in, please? 815 290 0912, and I'll talk to you. How about the music industry? Can I interview you? Fucking everybody. Call in, please. 815. There you go. See, it's working. Huh. Yeah, no, it's on YouTube. I just have the camera off. You want to see? Because I'm just a mess and I didn't take a shower and I look like shit. And I didn't put my makeup on. See, there you go. I still have my workout clothes on. Oh, how come it's doing the it's doing the goofy um God, I don't want to hang up on myself over here. It's doing the green screen crap. Because I got it. There we go. See? Ooh. I got to hang my green screen on the back wall. And then I think I can throw this shit on there. Well, there's no answer. I'm being ignored, blown off, forgotten. Goodbye. Whatever. Well, I think I'm going to have a new policy. That if you don't call in, I ain't even starting fucking show. And then I'll just put them on hold and they'll have to wait. And I think that's what I'm just going to have to do. Hmm. That is too bad. It's not my fault though. I didn't do anything. I showed up. I'm here. Scroll the number up on the screen. Oh, okay. Uh, well, let me do a banner. How's that? Let me do a banner. How do you do that? La, 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 call. In number, but you got to wait. Number, I'm giving them until 7 30. Number, call in number. Concert, they fucking. Test number is 815 2 9 There you go. Okay, let's see. Create folder. All right. So then, can I use this one? Fuck, how do you do this? Um, bum, bum, bum. I'll just do it this way. I forgot how to do the banners. Okay, there you go. And then I can just share that up there. See, there you go. All right, so three minutes. Three mi Oh, speaking of countdowns, did you watch the uh, splashdown today with um, Elon Musk's dragon ship or whatever the fuck you call it? This is pretty cool, but it's so much like the Apollo. I'm old enough to remember that and seeing a lot of the missions and then the space shuttle, of course. But it's kind of weird. We're going back to parachutes and capsules splashing down in the Pacific Ocean. At least not, it's not on land like the Soviets used to do. The Russians. How stupid is that? <laughs> there you go, what? There I go, what? Do, do. No one is calling in. No, you got the two minutes. You have two minutes, comrade. I shall delete every single song that I have on my Spotify. And none of my fans will ever listen to you again. How's that? That's good for relations. How about I charge you like Google 
and no Denmark bands can be played on YouTube because you will not let me charge 70% and we can make all the musicians starve to death. Hmm. Sounds fair to me. La, 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 la. <sighs> There's nothing worse than getting blown off for an interview because you got jack shit to talk about. Two minutes, two minutes and counting. Bonnie, Bonnie, no, not yet. Not, you can't call in yet. I'm giving them until 7.30. Can't tie up my phone line. Two minutes. Two minutes and counting. Don't call in yet. Don't. Don't call in. If benefit of the doubt. Call in yet. Until two more minutes. Uh, one minute in counting. One minute in counting. Before we take 70% of all your money and tell you to go fuck yourself. I just might as well try to get freaking Maya on here. La 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 Twitter. Twitter.com. And I messaged her too, and I think she's fucking, she's pretty upset. Here's my cell. Yeah, I even gave them. Man, I've been trying to set this shit up. She gave me her cell phone. Should I be a real asshole and fucking give it to you guys? I would never do that. I'm kidding. It's a joke. I'm going to try to touch her, though. Hmm. 832. It ain't going to be much of an interview, though. What? Don't text me. 832. Oh, sh shut up. I, di I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Just hang on a minute. Okay. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay, hang on a second. Hello? Are you guys coming on the show tonight? This is her phone, so if I get ignored on this one, it's game over, man. Talk. I didn't know she gave me her cell phone. Tonight, it's going to be short and sweet. That's for damn sure. Okay, is that right? Yep. La, 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 la. All right, give me a second here. So if she doesn't answer that, that's her cell phone, then they're not coming. You're not coming. <laughs> la, 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 la. It's a good thing I'm not sensitive. Eh, whatever. I don't think they did. I don't think they ghosted me. I I think they completely forgot. They got a lot of shit going on. So, but but if she ignores this, then yeah, then then something's up. Something's up. Seven thirty. How far can I go over red if they call in? Ten minutes, you said. Well, it's still forty. It's still forty minutes if they call in like right now. Hmm. I'm not calling. Yeah, I got her phone number. I'm not calling her though. That's just inappropriate. I text her though. And even if I did call her, I couldn't put it. Well, yeah, I could put it on the show actually. But I just don't think that that, that would not be appropriate. I'm not going to fucking call her. But I could. <laughs> could call her on here. Uh. <laughs> hey, Tim, should we call now? Fuck. Yes. 
Oh my God. Is this California people or what the fuck? And they're moving and they're moving to Colorado. Please stay away. Yes, please. Yes, please. I'll give her the number. 815-29. See, don't you want to do your own fucking show? 0912. Okay, here we go. After I'm sitting here playing with myself for a fucking half an hour. Ugh. How far can I go over red? There we go. That's them. It's her. Hello. Hey, Tim. Hi, Margarita. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm I'm wonderful. I've been waiting here for half an hour, to be honest with you, to call oh, in. Hello. Sorry. No, don't worry about it. I don't. I I've been killing time and saying some creative stupid things to kill time but yes i'm so ha i forgot you gave me your cell phone i went back into twitter and i'm like oh i go shit i'm gonna text her and see what's going on because i messaged you on facebook oh, sorry tim no stop no it's fi it's fine it don't don't worry about oh. it i just expect a free t-shirt an album and uh free concert tickets how's that yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So is Dave showing up or is it you or, you know, it's been three years since we've done this. No, that's crazy. Time flies. You yeah, were... Dave is here. Yeah. Dave, hey, Tim. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Good. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, time... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying time flies. Crazy no. How fast. And do, do you remember that interview? Because uh, you were so sweet and it was fun and you're just like. Oh my God. It was great. I, yeah. I had a great time. Yeah. Great <laughs> no, time. I remember. Well, I didn't good. think it was that long ago. Yeah. Believe it or not, because I moved to Denver two and a half years ago and we yeah. did that when I was living back in Illinois and I'm pretty sure it's, it has to be close to three years. Yeah. Crazy. Man, crazy. <laughs> All right. So I, I don't know. Um, if you want to, what what's your opinion of Ever Still, your guys a self title, as far as genre and and whatever? Because I don't want to put words in your mouth, and and your, you know your uh, what you label yourself or what you're trying, you know, hard rock metal, whatever. And you've got a lot of fans from my show, by the way. And I'm not saying a lot, a lot, but your fan base is, is amazing and how it's grown since the last time we talked, especially with the universe coming out. It's a great album. Great album. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess we call ourselves uh, maybe industrial rock band. But... Industrial melodic metal. Yeah. Industrial melodic that's... metal. Okay. Yeah. Or, uh, like, it's kind of like Ramstein mixed with within within temptation. You know? Within. Yeah, within. <laughs> well, it's cool. Okay. Yeah, I Dave, I love your plan. I love that blue guitar. That thing is awesome. Oh, cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, I that... made him play that guitar first time in London, and he like really didn't want to play it because he never held it in his hand. Yeah. And I, I put him it. on the spot on stage. And then he almost dropped it. <gasps> yeah, I didn't have a strap for it. It fell off the strap. I mean, it it worked out really good. That guitar, um, it's obviously, it's it's like a one of a kind because the the Granger company they build everything by hand, and so pretty much every guitar they make is one of a kind. And it's a unique um, playing experience. So I didn't want to play it at the when they handed it to me because I I hadn't played it yet. I didn't even know how to pilot it. You know. <laughs> Is it a seven string? It is, right? Or no? Yeah, it's a seven string. Yep. Yeah, because you seem to like to play to play seven strings mostly, right? Yeah, that's pretty much what we uh, what we do now. Because the extended range and uh, the low tones on the bottom, we kind of need that for. Just it, it kind of ended up that way, you know. But yeah, I do prefer it now. Well, yeah, it's got to be. Used to Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it just took some getting used to, Tim. It's like, it's a lot wider, you know? Yeah, right. And then you got the, the what's the, what's the, uh, what's the string below the low E? Is it a B or what is it? 
yeah, low B. And then yeah. we, we tune everything down one whole step. So it's a uh, low A for us. Okay. All right. But then you leave it. I mean, you don't have to, because with the six string guitar, with the E being low, and every time you got to mm -hmm. change keys, you just, uh, I mean, Margarita can sing anything, so you don't have to worry about her. But your guitar, you got to mess with it every time you're changing keys. So No, we uh, pretty much move up and down the neck when we have to change. So, uh, yeah, instead of playing everything in open tuning, right, which would be kind of your six string thing where you can change the tunings, I just move around and find it at different locations on the neck. So right. part of getting used to playing something different is that it allows you to, to play with ear more than anything else. Hmm. So kind of a cool, it's a, it was a cool experience. Uh, you know, I've been, I probably switched to seven string about eight, nine years ago. And in the beginning it was difficult because I was used to thinking my way through everything. And then it just, it's become more of an ear thing now. So really, yeah, it's better for creativity, I think, because, I'm not thinking about it and then going to play stuff that I'm already used to playing, you know, dozens of times before we, I just try to find the sounds when we come up with an idea I just go looking for the sounds and it's a blank slate, you know? So, so you're saying from going from a six string to a seven string guitar is, has opened up your creativity for songwriting. Yeah, for sure. Wow. That's crazy. So, so then does it, does it put you more to like, to like into a blues mode where you're just improvising in that compared to, cause it seems like you're a modal player. I mean, you're, are you a, are you a, a self-taught or do you, are you, cause you seem like you're a technical player that, you know, you know what you're doing to be honest. Yeah. No, well, you know, I started out self-taught and then I moved to LA and went to, uh, GIT here and then okay. studied some classical for a couple of years. But yeah, I mean, you know, I studied theory a lot just because I wanted to understand the language. So mm -hmm. what happened was going to the seven string, it just allowed me to get away from that. And, and I remember something that Eddie Van Halen said um, when I was growing up, he said, you got to learn everything and then just forget it all, throw yeah. it out. Yeah. Start from school. And just put it in the back of your head, you know, because otherwise you get too um, hung up on, what you can and can't do. So, you know, and the last thing you want to do is when you're writing your own music is have limitations because then you're going to be stuck repeating the same thing everybody else does. So mm -hmm. that was the cool thing about switching, you know, switching to uh, seven string a whole step down and we just look for sounds and then we build on those sounds. We don't even start with uh, any kind of basic song idea. We just hunt sounds down and put them together. So you do that and, and then do you come up with the percussion and then does Margarita come in with her lyrics? I mean, how do you, how do you even do that? No, it always depends. Sometimes like I make song on the keyboard. Sometimes it starts with a guitar. Uh, sometimes drum sample. a drum sample. And then, I mean, lately, like the newer songs, I've been putting like the choruses together mm -hmm. and then Dave play like takes over and then puts some, more parts and then i you know we kind of go back and forth like we never work on a song at the same time because it but, would you yeah know, but with the, the ability end up bad. <laughs> the, we're able to do that though because we have a recording studio uh at home so we use that as the central um, headquarters for the song so the songs start at our studio and we put them all together and make the scratch track and then we go out to other people and work with them on the song. And then at the end, it comes back to our studio and we do all the final editing and making sure all the tracks are perfect. And then, then it goes from here to Denmark where, uh, I guess we're then, uh, is Google going after everybody in Denmark? I yeah. I just was talking about that to kill time, you know, waiting for you guys to call in no offense. And I'm like, uh, because Maya from forever still put that on her Twitter page that, right that uh she's like you know she didn't freak out or nothing but i i've interviewed her three times and i've been a fan of forever still for like seven years and i found them on twitter too like you guys and uh i can tell enough where she's kind of concerned which she has a right to be and then on top of that uh spotify or google or somebody's whoever's given the royalties or the how many 
how much you guys get paid, which I think is a penny, a click, or whatever ridiculous amount it is or isn't. Oh, it's not even that. Yeah. On, see, uh, yeah. <laughs> on Spotify, it's about point zero zero six. And these people can live with themselves. I mean, yeah. I don't want you guys saying anything because I don't want you getting in trouble. But I mean, and me as a fan, that that's a bunch of horse shit. I, I'll, I'll share a story with Forever Still. So I was busting Maya's balls about because her arrangements and I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm enough. I can read music in the alto clef and I can, you know, mess around on the guitar enough to, to satisfy me. All right. So I told her, I go, if you want to get fans in the United States, you got to have a guitar solo. And she kind of pissed about it. And I was like, whatever. And I'm like, and I'm like, you know, but I'm just being honest. I mean, I, as a fan want to hear, and Dave, you know, this, I mean, you're a guitar player. You got, you got to have some type of solo or melody, you know, after the bridge and then a chorus and fucking whatever. And you got to have something in there to grab people to get their attention. Well, none of her songs has any guitar solos to speak of. So I she said, part, solo? she don't, she doesn't like them or what? well, I don't, she wouldn't give me a reason why, you know, cause she kind of got a little bit, she's a very smart girl. And, you know, she was running the band for a while until she signed on with whoever she signed on. Cause now for me to talk to her, I got to go through her agent and all this crap. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, whatever. But right. she, I go, you need a solo, especially this song, um, uh it's not last day it was another song i can't think of it now because i'm on the spot but you need a guitar solo in right here in this song and you know what she said to me she goes well why don't you do something about that <laughs> so you you to oh my <laughs> god so she she projected all of my bullshit that i was projecting onto her back onto me very smart girl and i'm like uh uh <laughs> so I go, well, what key is it? And she goes, well, I think it's an E flat or, you know, cause she, they down tune too and whatever. I don't, is that something with female? Uh, I know, I know Marguerite can sing anything. I, I, I mean, if you want to comment again on your background and your abilities, Marguerite, that's great. But is that a key or, or down tuning I for, know, I think it's, I think it's because of oh, corn started that whole thing, the down well, tuning, oh, but really? it's, it's okay. kind of, because we want to have like a wide range of sound in the song and it just creates a nice cock because like me and like my voice and the keyboards we kind of take up the high frequencies so the lower sound balances it out nice. tim, tim think of it this way okay like if you were looking at the keys on a piano yes the left hand is going to be all the lowest pitches and the right hand is going to be all the highest pitches right so we go as low as we possibly can on the left and then she sings really high anyway so this extended our range from uh, as low as possible without the thing threading out to as high as she can sing over there and we can obviously go high on the guitar next so we just wanted to extend the range by tuning as low as possible got so it. it would be the equivalent okay. of having a longer keyboard you know got longer it. note palette for more octaves yep yep more options more octaves more, yeah, well, yeah. She, what's her range? Six octaves? I don't even want to guess. I don't know. Yeah. She just yeah. sings it. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's crazy. I mean, you're so talented. You, you, and you're so humble and so sweet. I mean, right. I mean, she's. I've never heard her have an attitude, or you know, your guys' videos are great because I saw it when you were in LA and the COVID nineteen lockdown and all that crap. And I love those little uh, chats you guys are having on Facebook. Yeah, we should do more. Yeah, we'll probably get back to that. <laughs> you haven't done them in a while? I haven't seen any in a while, so maybe you haven't. I don't oh, know. we got busy. Because well, we, were, we have uh, the new album we're recording. We're here, like, on the sixth song. So every weekend or, you know, we work and then we record. So it's been really busy here. But mm. we'll probably do one next weekend, maybe. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, because you guys are recording, right? Because I saw your Twitter post and I commented on it that your drummer was smashing his part or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He smashed the drum. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Well, let me take a couple more minutes about back to me with Maya. So she's like, you should do something about that. So I put, I really put my foot in my mouth in that one. So I got a little interface here, nothing fancy and some recording uh, software, nothing fancy, not like Pro Tools or whatever. 
in a little Yamaha practice amp. So I interface it in. So I played the song and I kind of rearranged it a little bit with, with uh, audacity. That's what I was using and uh, mm -hmm. put a little bit progression better in to come up for a good part for a solo. And that solo, first of all, I never figured out what freaking key it is. And what you said earlier, Dave, like now you just play by ear or whatever, or what feels yeah. right. That's the solo I came up with because I was listening to the song and I'm like, oh, my God, this this is so hard because I've never done this. And yeah. I, I finally came up with something. I have no idea what key it was in. I really didn't give a shit because it yeah. sounded good. And you said, you know, the Eddie Van Halen thing, right. learn, learn as much you can and forget it. He's also said that if it sounds good, it is good. So yeah, just take, take your theory and shove it up your ass because sometimes it doesn't make sense or it doesn't have to make sense as long as it sounds good. Right. So I did that and I recorded it and I sent it to him and her response was, she says, that's pretty good. But it took me four and a half hours just to come up with a, I don't know, 20, 25, 30 second stupid solo. Oh yeah. Well, that's how it is. Oh my God. Something took you a long time and some things come to you right away. But, that's the journey of creation, you know? And that's so hard because, because I was saying before I, out of desperation, I go, I got to try to get a hold of these guys before I just call it. And then, and I called there, but I called or I text Margarita and thank you God. But it, the amount of time, I mean, to get the band together, get the chemistry, get the right band members, practice, get a sound, get everything down, come up with originals, covers, and then get in your piece of shit car that probably ain't going to make it to your first gig and get there and play and play and play and do it again and do it again. And then you finally get signed. And then whoever signs you, well, we'll sign you, but we want the rights to your music or we want a million dollars. And and then you guys get screwed by this whole thing. And I'm not saying you do don't, you know, I'm not saying you're saying this, I'm saying this. And that aggravates me as a fan, because for me just to come up with a 20 to 30 second stupid ass solo was one of the hardest things I've ever done, which gave me more respect for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is a crazy process. huh? I mean, because that's with something like this, you really have to love doing it because the reward is the doing it itself. You're not going to, if, you, if you're doing it for money or you're doing it for fame, I, I don't even know. Those are all just byproducts that maybe you get lucky enough to stumble upon one day. But really, the whole process is so involved in so much, so much labor. You got to really enjoy it. Yeah, right. Just the intrinsic of of play, doing what you love, playing guitar, and you actually have people. It's kind of like the show with me. It's like you know, it's nice I have listeners. You know, if I have 10, 100, 1,000, whatever, that's just more rewarding. But, you know, I really don't do it specifically for that. I honestly do this show for me because it's half of its therapy a lot of times. And, and then I, you know, bring, I love interviewing music, musicians. You guys are self-business owners and entrepreneurs. And I did that um, starting my own business 20 years ago. And I know how hard of work that is. So I got all the respect in the world for you guys. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Tim. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I, it's it's hard, but like, you know, it's it's funny because I was looking through my phone. You know how like I cloud automatically downloads the phone whether you want it or not. So my phone has like this tons of photos from years and years of this band, and it's just like for some reason my phone like got all the way to the beginning and like all stuff was done. And just remembering how much pain in the ass everything was. <laughs> yeah, right. Some of the, I'm surprised we made it through, you know, crazy to think about. And it's like, crazy that we got to Japan with that whole European tour. I mean, we've driven it, all over the U.S. We've we had all kinds of accidents. And we did all those music videos. Like, yeah. On location. We went to Iceland, like, pretty crazy. Yeah, we've done quite a bit of stuff. That's <laughs> crazy. Uh, what was your what was your favorite kind uh, you don't want to answer this that's fine don't upset your fans but what was your favorite country to play in oh there's a lot of great ones now I mean, we, europe in general europe and japan, really both. Yeah. yeah really really fun oh well, europe it's really inspiring to be there just because you know you walk outside and there's all this history around yeah you. because of right. the buildings yeah. and the 
sure. you know, the music is just such a big part of their culture in Japan as well. You know, they really have a lot of respect for musicians, and it's just a really huge part of the you know life over there. And they're and they're so advanced. Like mm-hmm. Japan is, I mean, until you're in it, like you don't realize how far ahead they are as a as a society probably than we are. Because really? we're very eager people, you know, but they have no litter and they're very quiet and they're very humble. It's, it's crazy. Thirteen point five million people in Tokyo, no litter. And no trash. No noise. Wow. No noise. It was the craziest thing. So you know, we we went because you can hear birds flying. Like Yutaka, <laughs> the promoter, brought us over there. Who's like, you know, he's our dear friend now. But they took us all over Japan, and like we went into the subway and we went to like the crowdest, like most crowded um, places, and uh, like everybody was whispering. I was talking normally. <laughs> like I thought I was screaming. It's crazy how you know how different. It is over there. And, you know, the thing is, like, they treat everything it's like their house. I think that's why oh. it's, like, side of run so smoothly and there's no trash anywhere. There's no traffic. is because they really treat it like, you know, they're in their house. And, of course, like, in Europe, the food is amazing. Like, so, yeah. like, everywhere you go, it's, like, very rich. You know, Japan is cool because they really preserve their culture. So, you know, you go one way and everything is like ancient history. And then you go and like the toilet has all these buttons and it talks to you. (laughs) It talks to you? Yeah, they got a remote control toilet. Oh, my God. I don't want to know what it says. Huh. All right. (laughs) But but the Japanese are all honorable and respectful and, and, you know, just great human beings. But when when the music starts and, you know, you rip out the first chord or whatever, do they just lose their shit and start screaming with the, and all the energy comes out? Or are they still respectful and just, you know, are tame? Because I've seen some concerts in Japan and they seems like they just go nuts. Well, some they, of them do. Like, they do like to party. But they, they go nuts when they think they're supposed to. And then they don't. <laughs> When you stop the song, they don't do anything <laughs> until you tell them the end is there, right? Oh, so, wow. That's got to be it, it is crazy. So then you're and probably so you, sitting up there going, yeah. fuck, they didn't like the song because they didn't clap, right? Or that's got to freak you yeah. guys out. Uh, you'd hear a pin drop. They would be dead <laughs> quiet. Thank you so much. Then they go nuts. But you know what's crazy? Like when we were in Europe, I think it was in Belgium. And the crowd was so quiet. We thought, oh, my God, they hate us. But then we bought the most merch, which is... Yeah, some of the places were... They were just, the people, they were so quiet. Slovakia but it's, crazy, it's yeah, the yeah. way... And then, like, Sonata Arctica, they were like, that's how it is. You know, some... Like, it was Denmark and Belgium. Those crowds were... The people were just very quiet and they were respectful and they would clap like at a classical. It, it, it reminded me of like a classical concert because yeah. everybody stays really quiet and listens mm-hmm. to you. You know, it's like a thing, like you're not supposed to make any noise at a classical concert. <laughs> so it was kind of like that. But like Eastern Europe was total opposite. They were like, you know, people were going nuts. And then after the show, they were all kissing everybody. Yeah, I think they were, they were David died. Died. <laughs> Some oh. guy. I think kiss him. Oh <laughs> yeah, my god! Weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about universe because now you brought all that stuff up, and you, uh, your videos are fantastic, and I'm so happy to see that. Being being a, a kid grown up, I mean, MTV came out in what eighty one or whatever, so I saw that whole thing with music, television, and, and videos twenty four seven hours a day. Your videos are awesome, and weren't some of those filmed over in Scandinavia or something, or or where were they? One filmed? of them was Iceland. Yeah, Iceland. The face okay. of the camera was filmed in Iceland, but a lot of those videos were kind of hollow. Was footage from Europe, though. So. I love. Oh, yeah, I hollow. love that song. I played that song actually before I came on. Oh, cool! I Thank think that's you. my favorite song off the album. I I got to listen to it a little bit more, but that one catches me. I I like that a lot. Hollow. hollow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really interesting to hear, you know, what people's favorite songs are. Everybody has such different tastes in music these days. Yeah. It's really cool. 
Yeah, I mean, we're we're really looking forward to getting this next CD out because we we feel like we've really taken Universe to another level. Oh yeah, we can oh, hear the absolutely. The yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think we've we've matched and come up quite a bit. So and we got we got some great people working with us on this one too. We got Neil from Three Days Grace working, uh, helping produce. Awesome. So it's yeah, it's, it's kind of. Uh, an interesting journey, you know, all of this stuff just kind of developed. Now uh, we're moving forward. Yeah. You're evolving. I mean, when I heard universe and you guys, I mean, no offense, but it took forever for the album to get released. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, I'm listening. It to almost took longer. It's a, it's oh a, yeah. It almost took longer. It was pretty are you serious? Crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. Because it was, you know, they were trying to release it like in February. They're like, we have a tour in November. Yeah. So um, huh. the man kind of stepped in and got an argument. Yeah. It's, you know, everything's always got 10 other things, other reasons. And the more people involved, the more things need to be worked out. It's, uh, it's kind of a, um, you know, it's to be expected, but it is kind of daunting when you're just trying to release a CD and then you got to wait for everybody's timeline. And, you know, you, you know, it has to be done a certain way. Otherwise it would come out and, you know, you're, you're going to narrow your opportunities for, you know, exposure. Mm -hmm. so we got to kind of, and that's hard getting used to the more people that come into the fold, you have to really take into consideration everybody's expertise, you know, cause we used to just release everything as we felt like it, you know, <laughs> we would just put one, you know, we'd do an EP and then we'd turn it into an LP or we'd do two songs and make a video and do a short tour. So now we've turned everything back around and kind of everything is in a logical order, which we've tried to get on that, for, for years on our own, but now that we have team, you know, management and label and everybody in the right place, right. it's easy to stay on a schedule. It's just hard to get used to. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I can't imagine that would really aggravate me because I, I, I sent some frustration with you, Dave, about it. Cause I remember talking to you about it on Facebook and getting the album out and that would be yeah. challenging to, to go on tour on an album that hasn't been fully released. Oh yeah. That would have been crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's like, what the fuck is these songs? Not, not that big of a deal, but like, that's insane. Yeah, yeah, well, that's suicide, actually. I mean, come on, that that's just. There's always some songs on the album with even with your biggest fans that they don't they they're not familiar with because everybody tries to listen to the album and then they pick their favorites and then they play the hell out of them a hundred times, yep. and then you stumble across the other ones. But I I have to say I think in universe and this is just my opinion. You guys found your 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 groove in your in your sound, and yeah, I it, would agree. Too. Yeah, I don't know if that if that makes any sense or not because a band is always looking for their sound, and and in my opinion, and listening, I mean, I still like Mask and Tail the Gun. I love that fucking song. But if you compare that album to this one, it's night and day. I mean, it's not, it's not even like the same band. Yeah. yeah, we've actually been going through a lot to uh, try to get Mask. <laughs> <laughs> taken away from it. <laughs> oh my god yeah it's been nerf i mean because we don't want that out there that's essentially like a demo you know oh you really oh i love i love tale of the gun oh my god that's a great song <laughs> oh whoops <laughs> well soon you'll be the only one that has it <laughs> yeah no i got it i got it in my spotify collection so uh and, you know, I buy everything that, that I listen to you guys too. And, oh, and speaking of that really quick, I don't want to get, get into this too much, but, you know, I do play your stuff and every time my network's getting the copyright strikes, you are like, Tim, you know, we're not going to get monetized because you're in, in, you know, uh, whatever you call it, your copyright infringement. And I said, son of a bitch. I go, Margarita told me I can use this material yeah. for my show. And it's what I want to do. You know, I want to play all your shit when I can. Yeah, that's a record label thing. But you know, it, I think song. it's uh, it's out of cause right. like even if there are songs, I get a copyright strike. Yeah, I've had you do? Too. Oh my god! Really yeah, I don't know. I think it's the algorithm. <laughs> I don't think. Yes. I think it just. Yes. Thing You're right. Happens. You're right. All right, I got to talk to you about something nobody ever wants to talk to, and I'm sick of it. So how how is COVID nineteen affecting you guys? Apparently negative. I mean, is all the tour 
dates canceled? Cause I know you're coming to Denver and I'm assuming that you're not now and, and what's going on, but it looks like you're being productive with it and making lemonades out of lemons. Cause now you're back in the studio, which was that, was that premature because you had the tour going on and canceled? Yeah, or? That's we were all ready to head out in September. Uh, I mean, we're always working on new music, but we definitely weren't planning on recording anything. Right. So, hence this whole thing. And then we were holding out till the very last minute. We're like, you know, this is all going to go away. We're going to go on tour and it's going to be fine. And our tour was like one of the last ones that got canceled. Yeah, we were really hoping it was going to, because that was going to be a a really fun tour. And uh, and hopefully it will still happen, but. Of course, now COVID. And now we're there's like a new tour in the works, but it's all the way in 2022. But I mean, hopefully there'll be something. I mean, I don't even know. This is just going on. Yeah, nobody knows anything. So long. Crazy. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. We I mean, we can put a guy. I mean, we can send people to space, but we can't come up with like a. Yeah, I know. Treatment for a virus. Right. Well, yeah, because it's going to change. I mean, they keep changing their mind what they want to do. You're locked down. You're not locked down. You can't do this. You can do that. No, you can't do that. The governor just did that. I went to work out today at Planet Fitness and starting August 1st. Now you got to wear your mask when you're working out. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to pass out if I, if I work out with, in lift weights well, with a mask on. At least go to the gym. The gym's been closed here for months. Oh, really? I, Oh, they opened it for for two weeks, and and that was you know after it was closed for two months, they opened it for two weeks. I went to a different gym, got a whole new, got signed up, paid three months in advance, and then they closed it again. Oh and it's my been God. closed for like yeah, it's just insane. I can't believe it. Like everything here in California is pretty much closed down, and it's not helping anything because we have you know all these idiots protesting and going <laughs> yeah, out there. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I know it's insanity. It's exactly what it is. I mean, I don't know how you can plan anything because then when you start to, then it changes. So I just hope all this stuff gets over and done with so we can all get on with our lives because I miss going to live concerts and I'm sure you guys miss playing live for your fans. I mean, I can't even imagine not being able to do that. Yeah, I mean, we because we just really started getting, you know, some good traction with with Universe. And yes, obviously we keep going you know what i mean because this was our our moment but you know we we figured well let's take advantage of it and come back stronger you know we'll have it we'll have another cd um the label's happy so for for us for the time being you know i gotta say okay. though this whole thing gave us i don't know, speak for myself but <laughs> gave me lots of inspiration <laughs> lots of like new ideas and themes to think about for this new album so it's really been um you know the songs kind of been writing themselves i don't know maybe it's subconscious thing uh, everything that's happening around us but it's kind of you know makes you think a lot and yeah and i got you with lots of i got a guy building me a new amp so i'll have a new amp for touring Ooh. <laughs> pretty serious it's a german company called driftwood amps uh-huh. they're amazing just like a, it's, it's like better. a camper and a wizard in one amp yeah because it's digital but it's also analog yeah it's a whole analog amp with a digital um uh box in the back so i can go direct out and i can record direct out just like you would with a kemper but everything else about the amp is an old school tube amp with the best of everything in the front you know <gasps> oh, 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 it sounds, like sounds incredible like yeah i built some yeah they're incredible amps driftwood they're called I'll have to look into that. Are they are they outrageously priced? Um, well, they're handmade, so they're not cheap. But okay. for for handmade amps, they're about half of what everybody else is charging. Yeah. People have really gotten crazy with the pricing on, on amps now, but I mean the quality is crazy. Like you know the the sounds and what you can do with the new amps is. I mean, it, I'm looking forward to having that thing. It's going to make touring a lot more fun. You know. Oh yeah. Are are you like a digital effects guy, Dave? I I mean, I know you're like real crunchy and low and like, I saw your playlist off Spotify. I was pretty impressed. Like uh, in this moment, some other bands, I was like, Whoa, (laughs) it's pretty, pretty hard stuff. Yeah. That's a good, that's for a good gym list, but yeah, yeah, I've been using 
temper for live and, and I have everything programmed in there. Okay. Um, so I use a lot of delay and I would like to use more, but I think, um, the Kemper has a lot of really cool effects, but for me and the programmability and how I use it, I would either go all effects or no effect. Uh, hmm. and I just think it's the way it's designed. It's so it's, there's so much stuff and it's so complicated. I use everything like an old school amp. I just want to be able to turn the knobs on the front. Yeah. To 11. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 That's all yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Kemper, I mean, Kemper, you can go nuts. You can save hundreds of sounds and it just will blow your mind. So I'm really looking forward to having the, the newer setup where I can do the best things on the back end like you would with the Kemper, get the get everything DI and you because we use the in ears live now and everything and uh, mm-hmm. and still turn the knobs on the front so I can get that really raw kind of rock sound. Yeah. And you Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. I just love taking my 100 watt half stack and cranking the shit out of it, just like ripping with it. Of course, I'm gonna get thrown out of my apartment, but I mean that's what I like. I, oh god, I love it. Huh. Yeah, I never, you get that raw kind of speed. Yeah, cracking up exactly, and then the gains all the way up, and everything's to 11. And I'm like, fuck, I love this. So much fun. Yeah, harmonics, <laughs> and you can't control the guitar because of all yep. the feedback and everything so it's fucking awesome i i know neil Schoen from journey loves uh a kemper he plays a lot on his instagram account and he rants and raves about that thing yeah they're they're really cool i mean i i have nothing bad to say about it i think it's uh pretty much sounds like a real amp i mean until you're going out to uh um basically the cab out simulation like um on the on all the software now they have those impulse responses Mm -hmm. which are basically um mic cabinets and digital simulations of microphones Mm -hmm. and good cabinets and good speakers there's basically just one sound coming out of the back end of the kemper so you have a great amp sound but a lot of what the tube amp does is happening between the speaker cabinet and the amp itself and the way it comes together Mm -hmm. so not using a cabinet out the back end of the kemper it kind of sounds still you know very it's really really clean which is obviously a good thing but you're not going to get that raw kind of like you know rough edge like you got a amp melting down cranked all the way up to 11 (laughs) yeah right oh oh man you're driving me crazy just thinking about it i would love to do that oh my god it'd be so much fun i gotta play through headphones because like i said i'll get kicked out of here if i turn my amp or unplug my headphones onto my amp but well that's really cool well margarita everybody needs to know what a wonderful piano player you are Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and uh, still loving you when you do that on YouTube. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thanks. Everybody <laughs> has to see that. That is. Have you guys done that live? No, that was just kind of like a cover. Oh. I did for- yeah, but you did the Motley Crue, uh, the Motley Crue song live because I've listened yeah, to it. That, yeah. yeah. Saints of Los yeah, Angeles, yeah. right? You know what it is is because, like, we, you know, lately we've been an opening band, and when you're an opening band, you only get, I don't know, half hour to 40 minutes. Oh. So, yeah, I think 45 is the same. Yeah, and now oh, we have okay. a lot of songs we want to yeah, play. Yeah, so we try to cram in, so, you know, 10 yeah. songs of our own. Right, yeah, That's you don't want to do any covers. I get that. I, I get that. Okay. But still, I love Saints of Los Angeles. I'm like, holy shit, you guys fucking nailed that song. I'm like, oh my god, and I don't even really like Miley Crew all that much, but wow. <laughs> yeah, we also did the remake of Bad, we just haven't released it yet. Yeah, we might put that on this album. Oh yeah, I saw that, because you guys had a contest to guess what song it was, didn't you? Yep. Yeah, and you know, yeah. we were going to put it out, and then that movie came out, so our label was like, it's not a good time to release it. <laughs> wow. Well. Yeah. Well, listen, I got a show following me up here and I'm going to get yelled at or whatever because um, I got to let them come on. So thank you so much. I'm sorry it was short. If we can do this sooner than three years again, I would love to. And talk yeah, let's to- do it. Um, just let me know when. 
Yeah, because, um, because I like talking to you guys and talk. I mean, just talk about anything and everything that comes up. And uh, I hope you guys feel comfortable doing that. Um, yeah. yeah. Hey, Tim, fun. one more question. So sure. what happened with the Google thing? Is there, are they still pulling the music down? Yeah, they're going to. I read a, Yeah, go ahead. I think it's, so there, they had some contracts mm -hmm. and the contract was up. So they haven't just negotiated the terms yet. With Denmark? Yeah. And while they're negotiating the terms, Google threatened to pull down the music because the CODA, which is the Denmark Music Association, Correct. they don't, they don't want to vote, you know, accept the, you know, payment of whatever. Yeah, I think this know. would be a good time for everybody to go at, uh, you know, all, all the streaming, I mean, try to hold them accountable because, you know, you know, like I told you, Spotify gives you point zero zero six. Yeah. YouTube gives you like, I think if you get a million streams, it's worth six hundred and ninety dollars. So what's that? Point zero 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 one. That that's, that's ridiculous. You know what? And I, I went on a rant before you guys came came on. I am sick and tired. You guys plug your ears, and this has no reflection on Edge of Paradise. This is me, but I'm getting sick and tired of watching people. That, like I said, busted their ass. You guys are business owners. You finally make it. And these people are sucking you dry like vampires. And it's just it's just making me sick. There's got to be a new, different business model. They don't need to be that greedy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I mean. Go ahead. It, with any luck, maybe change will come on the back end of the COVID thing. Because yeah. if people realize, you know, after being without the arts for a year, year and a half, Maybe they'll pay more attention to, you know, how things actually are because it's it's very difficult to make a living in uh, in any kind of artistic endeavor these days. Yeah, There's always people squeeze you more, you know, squeeze every cent. Yeah, I, I I told I told Maya because this stuff came up and she posted that I'm like, you know what? Why don't you just give your music away? It's all for free. Go on tour, do live concerts. I, I know it's harder than what I'm saying because I've never done it, but it's like get the bass and, and get all these fans and then do some live type of concert thing. And then after you get everybody hooked, then you charge them for your albums because they're going to buy them. That, that's how I found out about all the bands I love by my friend sharing, sharing the music. They're like, oh, did you hear this new band? Did you I don't know. And then I got it and I recorded it on my cassette from the album and put it in my car. And then I shared it with their, with my friends. I can't tell you how many times I bought all these albums that I love five or six times because I'm a fan. I don't want it for yeah. free. I, they got to get past, past that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. There is a difficult thing when you, when you take away value from something too. Right. So if you say it's free, that's going to give a lot of people, not everybody, but that's going to give a lot of people the wrong idea that something is free is not worth anything, right? Correct. They don't some don't look at it like, oh, that's really cool. Thank you. They look at it like, well, why would I want some shit for free? You know? <laughs> right. I get that. Kind of like, that. yeah, it's, it's a double-edged sword. And it's like, I don't have the answers, and I'm sure she does. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, go ahead. free because you can listen on it on Spotify. Yeah. And that's how, like, all the young people, right. you know, the younger generation, they don't even know what it's yeah, buying. And it is means. a bigger <laughs> metric now. That's why we keep saying go to Spotify, go to Spotify. Right. Because more industry looks at Spotify at the moment than YouTube and all the other stuff. For whatever reason, you know, and it'll change again. I'm sure it'll change again because there was a moment when it was Facebook and how many followers you had there. Right. Well, something's got to change. I mean, it's all, you're almost giving it away for free anyway if you're getting paid point zero 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 whatever per click. Yeah. I mean, give me a break. You know, you know I don't well, know. You got to have billions of streams to start getting. The yeah. Cash well, or, or, anyway. I know we don't have an answer, but there's just got to be there's got to be a fair resolution where everybody can make some money. But you got listen, without you guys, you musicians, these record companies are nothing. They're not. And what are they going to do? Go sing in a mic and learn how to play guitar themselves? They can't do that. But then even then you go one step past the record companies and Spotify is the real giant. The Spotify. Yeah, the it's Amazon, weird because Google. unless they put you on like a uh, playlist. You you're know, screwed. you pretty much yeah. get anywhere. Right. And that goes for labels too. If you had a label, wow. 
who basically have to be in good graces with all of the, you know, those are the industry callers now. Okay. Your Spotify, your Apple Google, Music. Your Apple Music. It's all not the label. Music. The okay. labels are getting squeezed. Uh, not as hard as the artists, but they're getting squeezed pretty hard too. Um, you know, they're they're now in that chain. They used to have quite a bit of command, but not so much anymore. I think probably Spotify is going to form a record label themselves. Well, yeah, I would. Yeah, that would be my guess. Well, yeah, I think they're owned by Sony anyway. I might be might be mistaken, but yeah, they're going to squeeze out the 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 record labels, and you're just going to go right to streaming. I mean, I don't see how that can happen. Yeah, that's probably where we're headed. Oh boy, and it, that's kind of like a radio station, unless the radio station or DJ or programming director agrees to play your material, just like streaming yeah. on Spotify. Then you're never going to get discovered. I mean, that wow, yep. jeez, that's rough. Man, whatever. You guys will attract. You guys will attract. I still believe in attraction rather than promotion. You know, I like I not that the show is anything, but I don't promote it and promote it, promote it. People want to listen to it. Great. I mean, I'm not making a living off of it or getting paid, but I don't really care if you like it. Great. Tell your friends and all that, and then we'll see what happens from there. But, you know, maybe that won't apply to the music industry. But all I know is I'm a music lover. I love your guys band. It's inspired me to play the guitar, or at least attempt to. And and I just love music. Music is a passion for me. And without you guys, then there's no passion and no music. So, I mean, I as a fan, I really appreciate all the hard work and dedication that you guys are doing. Oh, thank cool. you, yeah, Tim. Cool. Thanks, Tim. Well, you guys keep us inspired. So, yeah. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Well, share a little bit. Oh, I got a shirt, by the way. And I like it a lot, Dave. Uh, the Edge of Paradise yeah. shirt. I did buy it. Yeah, cool. I got it. I love it. It's great. I get compliments on it all, all the time. It's comfortable, right? You oh know, yeah, it's great. It fits great too. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, if you, I mean, I brought those back from Germany, man. Oh, they're imported. <laughs> they're just special from Germany. Yeah. No, <laughs> I because most it took us like two months to oh, get it. Yeah, back. four months. It took four months. Jeez. It was crazy. Yeah, it went DHL, and I thought we were never going to see the shirts again. I had like five or six boxes that were lost somewhere out there in the world, but they finally made it. Whoops. I mean, the, the shirt, the quality of shirts in Europe is much, 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 much better. Hmm. I don't know why. I mean, just the softness and the fit. The I mean, print itself, print. yeah. Yeah, it's a great t-shirt. I have my own show shirt, the original Rod Pill show, and it sucks compared to your shirt. I mean, it is very nice. Very nice. So, thank you for that. Thank you. Hey. I'll make you a coaster. A coaster? <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's making Did you see how it um, I'm, you know, keeping myself busy, but I've been having a lot of fun playing around with resin. So okay. I, I'm writing like lyrics from the new songs, and then I burn the paper so it looks all worn, and then I put it in the resin and like, make like cool design with it. And it's it pretty cool. Yeah, cool. hop on there and check it out. Too. All right, I will. Yeah, I wanted to talk sure. more too about your artwork and all your fans doing your artwork and all that. I mean, that's all cool stuff. I forgot about that too. Really cool. Oh, we'll talk. Yeah. Okay. So it's put uh, have Maya come on with us. And we yeah, her let's too. talk together. Yeah, you know so what? I would love to because I, I mean, I that girl. Um, oh my God. I, I mean, that girl can Margarita. You can <laughs> sing, and don't ask me to pick which one's better because I swear to God, I don't know if I could. But you guys got your different styles, so you know whatever. Yeah. But oh my God, that girl is so talented that I'm just like, why? Yeah, tell everyone. Yeah. Tell her to do it so we'll do two in double header. <laughs> I would love to, but I'll I'll have to call her agent and I'll have to schedule her and all that crap. Where before I could just yeah. message her like you guys. It's like, hey, you want to come on the show? Yeah, sure. But no, I gotta I gotta make an appointment with her agent. So I mean I'll do all that stuff, but I would uh, that would be so cool because uh, Cause I know she I mean, toured, I, she toured with Lacuna coil, which I love, man. I, I found out about that band before anybody like who the fuck is Lacuna coil. I go, you got to listen to her, Christina. What's her name? Oh my God. That's another one that just blew my doors off. Mm -hmm. yeah, they have I, good songs. I think one of those songs is on your playlist, isn't it? Dave Lacuna coil. One of them. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Yeah. So newer, newer. Oh, I think she's just so amazing. She's she. Oh God, whatever. So, the guitar playing is really good too on that new track. The solo is ripping. 
Oh, I'll have to check your your playlist out again because uh because I found it very interesting and in this moment, uh sick like me, I love that song. Oh my god. Yeah. She's she's awesome. But uh all right, well plug the band and where everybody can find you and a web page and all that kind of crap. And then I'll let you go. And thanks guys so much. I really, really enjoyed it. I love talking to both of you. And Dave, first time for you. Please come on again, yeah. both, both of you, because you guys are yeah. great. Oh, yeah, we'll talk again. Yeah, I just paradise and I just paradise on Facebook and Instagram. So easy to find us. And we're very friendly. So come say hello. Oh yeah. Well you're a sweetheart, you know, and Dave Dave's awesome too, but you're you're just like you're you're like a ball of light. It's crazy. You just always okay. look the you look at the positive and all the good in things, right, Dave? I mean, am I wrong? I mean Yeah, well she you know, I think every we try to as a whole that she does. Oh yeah, and, she's uh, yeah. I'm she's, she's, she could. Kind of, yeah, it's a good thing to do. Oh, absolutely. You you bring us up, Margarita, whether you realize it or not. I mean, I just Thanks. I feel the energy. I see it. All your posts and then your your broadcast, your Facebook live with Dave, and it just like you just raise everybody up. Just so you know that. Oh, thank you. That means a lot to me. Too. Yes, really that, appreciate that. That's your vibe. So that's what's coming out. Just coming from me. And an outsider. So, thank you. Okay. Thank All right, you. Dan. All right, guys. Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, let's schedule this sooner. And I'll see if I can get a hold of Maya. And I mean, that would be awesome, actually. Would, yeah. Yeah, let's it. do it. Just whenever cool. she can. You know, we're we don't, we're yeah, not. Gonna, <laughs> yeah, we'll make it work. All right, guys. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll let you know as soon as I find out. Okay. Cool. Thank right. you. Tim. Have a great Thanks night. Much. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. All right, guys. Sorry I ran over. I just I'm gonna gotta go because I know Red's gotta get on her show. So uh I didn't want oh, she's awesome. She is so fucking follow him on Facebook, Edge of Paradise. Awesome. I, I mean, she's she's just like a ball of light, and she's very beautiful and very hypnotic and just sweet. I mean, and she sings like an angel. Listen to universe, share it. You heard what they get for a click on Spotify, which is ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I, you know what? I knew they probably either forgot or time. You know what? It doesn't really matter. The point is I got them on. And it wasn't, they weren't ghosting me. I don't know. I don't really care what the reason was. What I care about is that they came on. And doing a show like this and being, everything's unpredictable. And, I got them on. That's all that matters, right? So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, they're awesome. I would love to get them on with Maya Shoning from Ever Still. I wonder if, I mean, I'm sure it's been done by somebody, but that interviewing two bands at the same time, I think that'd be fucking awesome, man. I love, oh, she's, yeah, she's got a beautiful voice. Oh, my God. Well, thank you, Bonnie. I love interviewing people. I, I love it. I, I, I just, you know, and it's all spontaneity. There's no script. I didn't get to say my rules, which I say to everybody. Okay. Here's the rules of my show. And they all go, and they usually go, Oh, oh, and, and there isn't any. And if I say something, I go, if I ask you a question or you don't want to answer it, just say, Tim, I, I don't want to talk about that. And I go like, okay. Cause I'll, I'll say anything. You should know that by now. So, but I would love I don't know. I'll see if I can get a hold of Maya, but now she's got an agent and she's really losing her shit because of what's going on with the Denmark thing now. And I don't blame her. So it probably wouldn't be a good time, but it may be a good time, but I, I will try. I'll try to get, I'll try to get, well, thank you. I love interviewing people. I, re, I started this show. I, I, I don't want to talk much. I'll get off right and quick. Just give me a couple more minutes. I started the show originally to wake people up and then I kind of it's like, okay, I'm going to back off of that. Uh, but while I was doing that, I also, I'm fascinated with musicians and rock bands. I mean, just, just cause of the passion of it. And I stumbled on a lot of them when I was on Twitter and I still am on Twitter and I'm like, Hey, would you want to come on for an interview? And I love up and coming bands because they haven't made it yet. You don't have to go through 10 layers of management to talk to them and blah, 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 blah. And they're real and, and they're fighting for that to, to make it to stardom. 
And if I can help do that, or just at least get the inside of that, uh, I think it's amazing. It's an amazing thing to discuss. So I would love to do more interviews too. And I will try, but, um, I mean, I hope you liked it. I, I mean, I like talking to people. I don't care if it was Eddie Van Halen or Brad Pitt. I mean, I care. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean disrespect. I want to talk to these people like they're people. Not kiss their ass and this or that or try to set them up for a question uh, to get them to answer on my show and nobody else can get them to talk about it. I don't, I don't do that. I want them to be comfortable and talk to me like we're sitting at Starbucks or we're sitting on a bar stool or we're out to dinner and a casual meal and just bullshit. I, that's what I want. And that's what I try to get. So, yeah, I know. I know. It's fucking YouTube. YouTube. The I, I'm telling you, these people are fucking themselves. These streaming people, these YouTube people, they're, they're making it all about the money and the slices of pennies per click. And one day, Mark my words, one day, if this keeps happening, these musicians or somebody's going to figure out a way to bypass all of them and tell them to go fuck themselves. And, and they're going to commit suicide. I mean, business suicide, not physical suicide. And the musicians aren't going to need them anymore because they're, they're just taking advantage of them. They're, they're oppressing them. They're, they're using them. And all for monetary gain. And, and it's not about the money. These people aren't playing for the money. Just like this. Oh, I'd love to get Dr. Strange on here. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, my God. That guy is awesome. That guy. You know, maybe I can't. I don't know. I, I, I don't. I never really pursued movie stars or or whatever. Although I wouldn't I wouldn't mind it. That would, that would be a lot of fun. I just don't want to get on somebody on here that I really like. I'm starstruck by because I believe it or not, I would probably have a loss of words <laughs> for the first time. But uh because I'm just so infatuated, I'm like, oh my God, I'm talking to blah blah blah. Like, whoa, really? What do I say? I don't want to upset him. Should I ask him this? Should I ask him that? Then I start playing, you know, mental mind games with myself. But anyway, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's just god awful what they're doing to him. It just it's such a turnoff. These people bust their ass. I practice in a band and then I'll, and I'll let you go, but I practice in a band. The practice alone's a bitch. And then when you have to load all your stuff up, put it in the trailer, get to the gig, set your shit up, sound check, blah, blah, blah. Then if everything works right, great. Then you do your gig. Then you got to break down. You got to load all that shit back in the fucking trailer. And then you got to go back either home or to the hotel. So you're not getting, you're not getting home until two or three in the morning. And people don't see that. Yeah. I couldn't imagine it to me a lost words either, but I'm just saying if I was just so star truck struck by him, like Sammy Hagar, if I talked to Sammy Hagar, I don't know. It would be rough. That would be rough. But cause I just, the guy is just, my all-time favorite musician, but who knows? I don't know, but, uh, all right. I got to go red gypsies next. Thank you for being patient and me stumbling for half an hour, wasting time. Um, Hey, all that matters is that the show happened. I got my, my guests on and I hope you enjoyed it. It was a little short, but it was over 45 minutes. So, which flew by and I was keeping an eye on the clock. But thanks to Dave and Margarita, great people, great band, Edge of Paradise. Check them out. Play the shit out of their new album. And uh, I hope you become a fan, and I hope I helped you become a fan because I think they are a great, great band. All right? Have a good night. Thanks for listening to me, and stay tuned for Red Gypsy, and I will see you tomorrow night. You have been listening to the original Red Pill Show.